Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Dean Callan Show. I've got a very special episode for you today, and it involves gin, it involves lemon, it involves basil, and it involves one of Germany's most famous, and I guess, like, most characterful bartenders. Um, if you've ever had the opportunity to hang out with Jörg Meyer, he is, like, quiet at first, but as the night goes on, he gets more and more, like, explosive and energetic, and... Uh, the longer you can hold on in an evening hanging out with Jorg, the more likely you are to see the full scale mega fun Jorg Meyer. So without waiting any further, <laughs> bam. How are you doing, Jorg? Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm good, I'm, thank you. I'm doing very, very good. Thanks. Yeah. I lost my glasses today. I don't know where they are. Can you see me? I like, you can see everything, yeah, it's right? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you haven't got your glasses because actually like the, the image coming through here is terrible on me and um, I've been getting more and more self-conscious since I turned 39. It's only one year away from 40. So when I, when I was like eight, 40 was really, really old. So I'm starting to think, think about my uh, middle ages now. Already become serious, man. Watch I know, I have, to, I have to be an adult. I have to actually grow up. I can't just like build random bars in my back garden and then do a show that makes no money you know i have to start actually monetizing things and being serious about stuff yeah. um so how have you been how, how's life well it's interesting it's very interesting in the moment uh very uh, much things are changing which we think uh, they're used to how they are and now they're different so it's interesting yeah every five minutes it's unprecedented times isn't it it's it just constantly yeah. gold posts is being moved i know i know in the uk with the the whole covid thing um they seem to be just like going after small businesses and it feels like you're being attacked especially in the hospitality industry um but uh well ho hopefully march it'll all they'll start to try to normalize a little bit they're uh, they're extending the the um the support packages for COVID related things until till Brexit really hits. So that it'll look like it was COVID's fault that, that uh, the UK uh, crashed a little bit when they come into proper Brexit, if that makes they sense. They can but still say it was COVID, yeah. yeah. They'll say it was COVID. They'll say, oh, all of those job losses was because of COVID, you know? But um, like we shouldn't be talking politics, right? Of the old school, like try to avoid it at the beginning of an episode, I think. Um, we've got people on, so it looks like we're live. Um, yeah, rock and roll. So um, I think the very first thing, because I've been dying to do this all day, I can smell basil now. I would like, <laughs> if you don't mind, for you to teach me from scratch and in an, it, like through me, everyone that, that happens to tune in and watch how to make a proper gin basil smash. Okay. All right. That's... I've done it before. I know the recipe. Yeah, I figured. I, I figured you might have made a few of them in your time, huh? Yeah. So first of all, uh, you need uh, you need a proper shaker. Something okay. Serious. So a proper shaker, like like should I? I've got I've got like Japanese one. I've got no. a little Eric Lorenz one. No, don't don't got... no, don't do don't do don't do three piece because the, you will have all this tiny basil in the top. So so should I go a, a worst off hotel series one? Yeah, for sure. I go Calabrese, you know, my yesterday. Okay, all right. Well, we'll stick to similar. Yeah. But you can also use Japanese. I don't care. Oh, no, I'm on it. I got these. I got this guy. So and then technically, normally when my bar is open, Ooh. I don't use this. I don't use this normally because we have we get it in kilos. So I'm not yeah, a day to use three, four, five, six, seven kilos a day to when it's a crowd at night, but nowadays seven kilos of basil. basil. Yeah, seven kilos. That's so much. Basil doesn't weigh much. It's true. What, it's a big box. What does seven kilos it's a big look box. like? Can you take a photo of that for me next time? <laughs> when when we will open again, I don't know, but oh. maybe when we make it, I will make a photo. Yeah. So and then yeah. for the. I mean, there's, the fun starts with a basil you choose. There's very different kinds of basil. Ooh. So we started in Germany. It's called sweet basil, which is you. I think you have Thai basil, don't you? I think it's Thai basil. Yours has got a more rounded, like 
Yeah. The, yours is the one. You do the hipster shit. It's okay. You always want to be something special. On the Man, I, I, I actually just stick to classics. I just got this from my corner store. You know, um, <laughs> it's it looks like Tybizzle. Yeah, it's so got it looks the sharp. Very dry. It looks very shitty. It's, it, okay. it's it's a bit dry. Like, wait, yeah. we can get a we can get a close up here for you if you like. Yeah, look at that. See, it's got the sharper ends on it. You know, I try to give it a drink of water, but it doesn't look like no, that's it's... that's bullshit. That's yeah, okay. You okay. <laughs> okay. wait so, tips so, tips from the best. Start with okay. good basil. Like, look at yeah. the. I think also. Green. Maybe maybe my saturation. Like I'll try I'll try to like make my basil look more green. No, it's not gonna work, is it? No. No, no. it's too shit. Oh no, now it's just yeah, all no, gone but wrong. now it's the whole picture. now you look <laughs> now the whole picture looks ill. All right, well I've got no. the best basil I can. I literally bought it an hour ago, so I'm starting so on not... next time I'll I'll start with the you're you're saying it's in Germany, it's called sweet basil, but it's that bigger, yeah. rounder, fuller, more wet leaf. It's this yeah? classic, what you do on, on uh, Caprese, you know, you do it for Italian kitchen. It's very aromatic. Okay. So this is really good. And then for the fun of it, in summer, you can get red basil, okay. which is the same, but the drink gets purple. That's very interesting. Nice. But Thai, Thai basil has a very own taste, so the drink will be very anise. To be honest, I don't yep. like Thai basil in the drink. It's okay, but I think it's very special because it gets very spicy and a little bit different. And there's some, it's different. Yeah. But I, it's I've okay. got a, I've got a fennel kind of anise flavor coming yeah. from this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's I guess we could do a different. We can do another episode down the line. You know, like when when everything's back online and and I can have you here during London cocktail week, and I'll get proper basil. I'll bring, I'll throw in a bottle of champagne if you come to my house. That's okay. That's okay. Great. So right. what's important now? Most people use the leaves, which is nice, but it's about the sprigs. Okay. So take the whole thing. The problem is your basil is it's dry like a fart, so it's shit. <laughs> but in 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 this one, it's very juicy. You have lots of flavor in the yeah. Sprigs. So take the whole thing and take a little bit more. Take a handful. So three, four, big, yeah, put it in, yeah. Am I tearing this up? And you're putting the leaves in as well, right? Yeah, yeah leaves as well, yeah. Whoa, but that's a lot of If basil. you want to, I always prefer to have one nice tip as a garnish later. I keep one nice tip. Okay. Well, I've got plenty here. Yeah. And it's going to die. It's not like I can hang on to it till tomorrow. <laughs> uh, as soon as I so, pulled it out in the studio, there's so much heat in here. All right, that's a good looking tip. Just and what we normally is... used to do is we we muddle it now before we put ingredients in. Some. Okay. I've seen your I've seen your video on uh, Difford's website. Yeah. Yeah. Was that recent? Uh, no, that's like four or five years ago. All right. All ready. I'm actually lucky this muddling stick just fits in the top of this shaker. Yeah. Okay, here's a question for you, York. Yep. So back in the old days when uh when when I started bartending, well, a few years after I started bartending, stick drinks became very popular, specifically what, in Australia. What, what are stick drinks? Basically anything where you you're like a caipirinha, a caipiroska. Ah, okay. And then you put the, the bramble and say, hey, okay, I got it. Yeah. So like, and everyone, if they ordered a gin and tonic, they wanted a gin and tonic with muddled lime. You know, mm. the muddling thing was the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Um, and there were bartenders so, yeah. that would just take that out and stick it in a pot of water. And there were bartenders who would meticulously clean the end after every single drink. So yeah. you, having muddled more than, than anyone I can think of, just based on mm -hmm. the pure volume of drinks that you do with this, what's your take on it? So we have we have we we are in between. So what we do is because we have a hundred and more basil on a crowded night. Yeah. We have a, a thing with water, but we only use it for basil. I see. Yeah, that's a good call. So, but you cannot use it for anything else because otherwise you would mix up the taste. Yep. So, uh, and we have a few of them, and we clean them always, and then we give them to the dishwasher. So yeah, but nice. if it's a crowded night and you, you need to do like 10 in a row, you just dip it in the water. But that's only for the basil. Yeah. So 
it's yeah that's a, a good way to deal with it and they're they're hard plastic modelers uh yeah this is kind of black plastic and then this is a metal end for you it's, so it's a little bit more nice to, okay to nice yep. yeah nice yeah. very cool they're All not right. so good for a for a bar fight but they're okay <laughs> um so we've got some comments coming in mark plumbridge says that uh, mr Jorgmeier likes enjoys the occasional bottle of bollinger Oh yeah, always. Yeah, Magnum. like look, three, three, if he wants to send some three liter, would be nice. I I literally was just making a video of, uh, on on Sabraj, and uh, it just so happens, it's nice. I have that set, sitting there. Like it's a shame you're not here, actually. Yeah, that's true. Right. So next step. So then you need uh, sweet and sour. So. Mm -hmm. For our original recipe, we use 30 ml of fresh lemon juice. Okay. Oh, see, this is what I should have done beforehand. Prepped my fresh lemon juice. Yeah. It's okay. You're not an active bartender anymore. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm an actor now. I just act like yeah, I'm a you're an act It's okay. It's okay. I'm, pre I'm, pre I'm pretend. It's okay. It's what Conan oh. does and all the good models. You could do a night show. It's, it's the same style, you know? It's good. That's my, that's my dream. Like, my yeah. dream is to get to a stage where there's, like, people sat here and they, they we're, we're like, ladies and gentlemen, you're Hogmeyer. And you come in and you get a bottle of Bollinger straight away. Everybody's cheering, you know? You've got some yeah, music. I like there's the a, idea. There's a jazz band in the corner, you know? Do 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 You know, as you roll in, that'd be amazing. Just like need that. a... A huge budget. <laughs> so technically, when we talk about uh, lemon in the basil smash, just mm -hmm. giving you a little history on that. So when you go to the to the, I'm not allowed as a German if I'm allowed to say Nazi bartender, but maybe to the you know to the hardcore mixologists. Yeah. When you when you talk to the old to this nerdy guys, they will always say you, oh you know. A true smash. There's not much lemon inside. Just a few drops. You do it oh, wrong. Right. And you're and muddling you're the lemon. Like, is that what yes, they're saying? Yes, I know, dickhead. It's fine. I know <laughs> it. So the, the heritage of a smash is is a julep. So it's it's a ton yeah. of bourbon, fresh mint, and then you drop in some drops of lemon, and that's the original kind of smash. Yeah. In the old days, and then. There was the legend, the maestro, not the maestro, that's the other one, sorry, but the legend, um, Dale de Groff. And he did, I think around 2004 or five, he did in New York, he did this remake on the Whiskey Smash. And he made it more fresh. So what he did, he used half a lemon, he cut it in half, mm -hmm. he put it in the mm -hmm. shaker, and he muddled the lemon with the mint and the sugar. Yeah. So... That yeah, that was, was the, the smash I, I knew, you know? Yeah, that's what everybody knew. So that was the new, when we were young and good looking, we, we would teach <laughs> that as a, as a whiskey smash. Yeah. So half a lemon, sugar, mint, muddle it, whiskey, shake, fine. And it's an amazing drink because you get the acidity and the oils from the skin. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite so, was a, a bourbon whiskey smash with a little bit of creme de peche. Just enough yeah. that it took the, the edge off the lemon, but it was like yeah. amazing. So when we started to do this, I mean, the inspiration was the whiskey smash. We also started to do it, or I started to do it with half a lemon and basil. Mm -hmm. But over the time, not, not long time, but the first few weeks when we started to serve it in the beginning of 2008, I realized it's very inconsistent. Yep. Every drink is very different. And also if it's, it was a half and half chance because sometimes the, the oil from the skin was not good. It was not balanced with the gin and uh, with the basil. It was not perfect. Yeah. So I decided to kind of change the recipe before I published it to just juice. Yeah. One of the things I did in the same context, caipirinhas. Yeah. I made so many caipirinhas, yeah. but we were going through so many that actually sometimes a box of waxed limes would turn up and we were putting them under hot water. And the, just the, the staff costs by one mistake of someone ordering the wrong types of citrus. I ended up juicing the limes and then I'd keep one piece like out, you know, I'd muddle it or juice it. I'd keep one piece out and 
put the juice in, make the drink like more like a daiquiri, put the crushed ice and then put that last little piece on top. So you'd have your muddled bits, yeah. but I wasn't going through that whole process every time and I got yeah. much more consistent and I was able to yeah. fine tune the balance. So yeah, I understand. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So we have 30 ml of, of lemon and then we use 20 ml of sugar, simple syrup. We always okay. dye it because we are lazy and... And your, your simple syrup is uh, just a one-to-one -one simple syrup? Uh, we always buy it, so we use Muna cane oh, sugar. Oh, right, okay. I think it's so, one so, to two. So it'd be like 60 bricks, the Monin one. I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm not that guy who measures bricks, you know. All right. Well, I just so happen to have some store-bought stuff, so I'm yeah. going to compliment my homemade syrup with some store-bought I don't think yeah. I'm going to have quite enough even for one. You're and really old school. You still do your syrups. I like that. How, how, much, how much syrup? So we use 20, so it's 30 to 20. I mean, 20, technically, it's, it's about like every sour. It's your preference sweet and sour mix. Yeah. I mean, some say it's 25 to 15. We do 20 to 30 because we also add more gin. So I don't know what's your preference. It's, it's, I mean, it's, well, you have to I, make a great I'm not going to lie. Person. I've got huh? a sweet tooth. So, so if I make a drink for myself, I make it a hint stronger and a hint sweeter than I would if I was making it for a guest. Okay. So, and then people try my drinks that I made for myself and they're all like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's not Got my it. fault. The, the, the ask me for a drink is a different drink. Right, so we've got everything in but the gin. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. And then we use, in, at Le Lyon, we use water. Yeah, I don't have that at the moment. That's okay. I mean, so, we started with... So the idea is start with the classic London dry, strong. I mean, don't go lower than 43 ABV. That's a shame. So I've got a really amazing gin here. Have you tried a uh, Boatyard gin? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, I've, I've seen it. I know it. I've tried it somewhere in London once, yeah. Yeah, it's a 46% Irish gin. It's nice and dry. Everything that goes in there is organic. It's pretty yeah. solid. I mean, the yeah. idea is, like we all do, I mean, use the gin you like. Just be, when you have a very floral gin or you have a very berry gin or whatever your gin is, the, the drink will be different. Maybe it's a perfect match, maybe not. I don't know. And how much are we we're putting? We're putting 70, right? Yeah, I mean, when you saw defaults, that's where we started. The idea is, <laughs> the first recipe was 50 mils, and I decided that's not enough. Yeah. So we made 60 mils, the recipe of Le Lyon, but we always ended up in 70 minutes because we say 70 is off. You give a little extra if it's regular, you give a little extra. The extra 10 is for love. So, yeah, so it's so, 70. And, and that, that started with that difference video? Because I've heard that a couple of times. I think it's quite a yeah, cool I think thing. that was the first English version where I told the, the, this, this quote. Okay. I did it in German before. But... Right. And um, ice. Are we, ice. We're shaking, right? You're, you're, you should be shaking, baby. Oh, this is going to be rough. I've just, I've just refilled my fridge with ice. Say it again. So I've just refilled my fridge with ice. So look, look at this. Look. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, ninja, that is. So exactly yeah. fit 49 blocks of ice fit in one of the yeah. consumer trays. Have you, have you ever been to a good therapist for that? And if you look at these. Dean? Yeah? Have you ever been to a very good therapist for this? I can, I can maybe help you with that. Um, I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a really good therapist right here. <laughs> <laughs> solves, solves all my problems. Good. <laughs> All right. Now, plenty of ice, I so, guess. I, I mean, the it. problem is, in the in the introduction, you told as long as you stay with me the night, and harder we get. So we have to we have to fulfill your announcement. Why? You said that when we introduced me. Yeah. You said when you when you have a night out with me, as long as we both go, I get more and more active. Yeah, you like well maybe maybe you were the same amount of active, and I just started to like. I appreciate your little subtle like comments and stuff more, you know? I'm like, this guy's hilarious. 
how come no one else is laughing all the time? Normally we call it Tourette, I guess. Yeah, I, I enjoy hanging out with you. Uh, okay. Right, let's go for it. <laughs> all right, whoa, it is frosty. So yeah, yeah um, my ice delivery. So Carlos Pinto, who's commenting now, my uh, he sent my ice to arrive just in time for the show, and he's been a big okay. supporter of me. He's got an ice studio in London, so he's Good. supplies ice all around London. Great guy. Right. I don't know oh. where I'd be without him, actually. You need a tumbler? <laughs> yeah, I've got a tumbler. Ah. Oh. Mm. So, is that appropriate? Yeah, it's legal. And we're double straining, is that correct? Yeah, oh, wait a second, I need to get something. This is very exciting for me. This is an exciting moment. Sorry, so yeah, you need to double strain it. Yep, I'm on it. Oh, it's so nice green. And even with your shit bezel. Yeah, I know, right? Imagine what it's going to be like when I've got really good bezel. Yeah. And proper color grading. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, let's see. I'm hoping this guy will be the right size. Oh, it's like a dream. Here we go. And a garnish, right? Yep, you put it in there already. Yeah, you, you put some bezel on you it. You put yeah. the smallest bit. Well, not the small, but a tip. You can, I mean, if I would be Dean Callan, well, I do a Dean Callan style. Wait a second. <laughs> Overkill. I think you, you would go for something like this, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> And then I play the song Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Nice. Jörg, thank you so much. Cheers, pleasure's mine. Ah, oh, it's delicious even with the shit basil. I think the good gin helps. No, don't get me wrong. Um, I think Thai basil gives a great drink, but it's a little bit different. Mm. In my head, I'm kind of like adjusting to try to think what it would taste like. Because Thai basil, you're right. It's got a kind of a anise flavor and almost mm -hmm. a pepperiness to it. That yeah, but can, it can be good because it's very spicy. Regarding to the gin, you just have to find the right balance. It was really good. Yeah, good. I like to hear. Very happy with that. Right, so Great. Now, now that we have a drink in hand, um, I thought I'd, I'd uh, ask you a few questions about, you know, bartending that I've always... I've always wanted to know because um, the, if you if you recall, the last time we were hanging out in Germany was at Berlin oh, Bar Show. Okay. And I was I, my, I don't know if you remember, but I was telling you the story of the first time I went to Golden Bar. I went to Klaus's bar, mm -hmm. and when I first got in there, the the bartenders were very kind of like they they responded and they they were like polite but not like super excited and engaging. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the longer I spent in there, the more I got to speaking to them, the more I got to know them, the more friendly they became. And um, I feel like they're, the guys in Munich are a lot more friendly than some of the guys in Berlin. No offense to anyone in Berlin, but um, you told me there was, there was a, a name for like a style of uh, it's Berlin Schnauzer or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to drop you in it, but you said there's like a, no, there's but like, and, that's, and that's you, nothing. That's nothing wrong. It's just like there's a. It's called Berliner Schnauze. It just says that Berlin people have a very direct, sometimes way to to address things. So where if you don't come from Berlin, you might be a little bit like, "Oops, well, why yeah. are they so unfriendly?" They are not unfriendly. They are just Berlin. Yeah, exactly. And that and actually, when it's like when you apply that like layer of thinking. It makes perfect sense. You know, it changes yeah. the way you're seeing things. So 
Um, from, from my point of view, I'd like to ask you, when you look at um, British bartending styles, American bartending styles, Australian, Japanese, like what would you say that uh, German bartending has that makes it kind of different to the other bartending styles? Like, Because I know that Germany not only makes their amazing tools, but every time I, I've been to Germany, I've gotten consistently amazing tasting drinks everywhere from from you know munich to cologne to hamburg to berlin they're always making great drinks mm -hmm. so i think we do yeah so for me i think that that the attention to detail is in the is in the, the getting the recipe perfect but what would you say berlin bartending separates from other styles you say german or berlin oh sorry german german but okay german bartending. so first of all i think that's a tricky <laughs> that's a tricky question because in each country, you have very different approaches of how people bartend. I think you have many different styles of bartending in each country. But if you, if I should go and view from a from a wider perspective on Germany, maybe with my experience, I would say a little bit what you said is uh, I think we have excellent bartenders and bar and female bartenders. I don't. What's the word in English for female bartenders? Bartender, <laughs> I think I, I, I would just call them bartender. I like that, but I'm always very unsure if that's the right thing. I think just, I think bartenders, I think if you're, if you're trying to avoid um, ge like gender, um, yeah, male and female, so how do you say that? I guess male and female is, is like a sex thing as opposed to like he and she, as my understanding. But I just, I would just call them bartenders. Okay. Whatever um, we have, but all types of people working behind the bar. Um, uh, so I think you're right in saying, I, I think we have amazing, well-educated, skillful people. What I think is different, I think from a wider perspective, not for everybody, but when I look for, I think when it comes to German bartending, it is very nerdy. Yeah, and it's very it's very much focusing on the craft, mm. which I think is only a very little part of the job. And what I love when I be in London or in America or somewhere else, I can spot sometimes a little bit more people who see also the empathy and see the room and they have a different approach of taking care of customers and just having a great night and don't get me wrong, we have these people in Germany as well. But from a wider perspective, I would say many of the German buttons, we always used to do Vereine or some bullshit, you know, this clubs and be like, you know, yeah. we found a bartender skilled and who the fuck needs this it's bullshit. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, that's bullshit. But these are these like, let's do it very correct. What's the, we learn everything. Yeah. It's a little bit, but it's boring. Who the fuck needs this? Nobody. Well, uh, so. I, I, I know I, when I first started, I was like super geeky about every tiny little detail. And I think mm -hmm. I only, um, I only get upset when a de when someone's not detail oriented, when they're also not guest focused, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If someone, if someone wants to retract and, and play the part of geeky bartender, then they better be a geek, you know, and don't get me wrong. <laughs> I think also being a geeky bartender can be very great for a very specific type of guest. Yeah. Well, th so. well that's why that's why you got to build a team that's evenly matched, you know? Like yeah. I, I always considered myself the point bartender on my team, like the guy that moves the fastest. But um, in my later years of bartending and certainly since being a brand ambassador for so long, I I'm I would consider myself more of a storyteller person, someone that literally would just chat to people all night, talk shit. Ke yeah. ke capable. Let, let, let the others do the work. <laughs> Team is talking to the customer. But I hey, I love the graft. That's actually my favorite thing. I just th I think yeah. I think the days I used to work in nightclubs. I think the days of five deep at a bar are gone. You know, I used to stand could, there and could shout. Take a while. Could take who, a while. Who wants a gin and tonic? And you, one or two people. Who wants to get served right now? Ah. Who wants a gin and tonic? And then, you know, you're making 15 gin and tonics because then everybody gets what they want straight away, right? Um, yeah. Those were my kind of style of bartending. Right, so I want to I wanna ask a favor. Um, I don't know if you've seen the show before, but every, we get, give ourselves a little bit of a break um, by playing Mitch's Minute and other little segments. 
And if you haven't seen Mitch's Minute before, it's amazing. It literally, today is a, a, a break in the norm. Normally, I get a, a video from Mitch maybe 20 minutes before I start the show. And he has just woken up because he's based in LA. And he reads a, a message and then he gives me his response. But this time, we were chatting really late at night because he's working till three or four in the morning. And um, I got him to make the video late at night. So it's different to the normal Mitch's Minute, but this is Mitch's Minute. All right, so in a rare planned Mitch's Minute, Dean and I have just got off the phone. So it's 3.30 in the morning here in Los Angeles. And, um, and he asked me if I could uh, taste something I'd never tried before, well, knowing that I keep a fair amount of booze in the house. But I have just got a, a delivery from my friend Charles Joel Lee, uh, one of the real industry nice guys out there in Chicago. And he sent me a couple of bottles of Malort, Malort, Malort. I don't know if I'm saying it right, I'm not very good at reading. I'm told it's not very nice, uh, or it's, it's somewhat polarizing. But I've never tried it before, and uh, here we go. It's my first, uh, my first shot of Malort, or Malort, but fuck, I don't know, whatever. not so bad it's kind of nice actually Ooh. I can see why people don't like it I'd have another one and that was uh, Mitch's minute I ask him a question he gives me an answer um, have you ever tried Malort what Malort um, yeah, when you're in, if you're ever in Chicago, try Malort. Or I'll try to find, I'll see if Mitch can get a miniature sent across and we'll send you some Malort to taste. Um, right. Uh, so one of the things I want to start doing on the show on a more regular basis, and it's not an attempt to have people send me free stuff, right, is to taste things I've never tasted before. So today, the thing I'm, I'm going to taste, and I've, unfortunately I'm not able to get, get it sent to you in time, but I'm going to ask you if it's in Germany just yet, is um, White Claw. Have you ever heard of White Claw? Nope. Okay, so I, I'm actually going to go for the best one. That they, the one they say is the best, which is the Black Cherry. So, so White Claw is hard seltzer. Ah, okay. So mm -hmm. the two trends that I've seen in the last five years pick up are like, no, not like non-alcoholic spirits or effectively water that is pretending to be spirits right and um and and water that has alcohol in it <laughs> right so this is a hard seltzer so it's supposed to be like soda water with a, a flavor in it and it's so let me have a look at this it is 4.5% alcohol, gluten-free, 95 calories, black cherry flavor, sparkling water must, with alcohol. It must be we, vegan as well, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it'd be everything. Uh, like in fairness, if they're putting just alcohol and, and some flavorings, using sparkling water, triple distilled spirit, and natural flavors, we deliver a surge of pure refreshment like nothing you've ever tasted, White Claw Hard Seltzer. Okay, so I'm just going to drink it out of the can. I don't think it was meant to be decanted. I get in now. I think it's this the way we, you drink it. It's nice. I, 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 tried think... a, I tried a few in Germany. Some of them are good. Oh, so there's German hard seltzers starting. Yeah, we are, and, not, and... We are not that. We are not that slow on global trends. Yeah. Well, I don't think I, that. This is the thing. I often, if I'm not hearing from things from a country, I think it's a language barrier. You know, apart from China. I think it's the language barrier and like a kind of maybe a broadcast uh, issue. But um, I, often I think that the reason we don't hear as much, I don't hear as much from Germany is because it's in German. Does that make sense? So you're only getting the yeah. drip feed of, of translated stuff. Um, but what are the German ones like? Are there big brands or is it popular? There's a, there's a few uh, coming on the market. I tried a few. Uh, my wife is doing PR, so she has a client, I think. So we had a few in, the, in our office. I tried a few of them. 
So, uh, yeah, they're interesting. I mean, some of the, I mean, I think with the flavor, for sure, for sure, some of them are artificial. For sure, it's, it's, uh, oh, it's, it's just good. The... This one has a kind of, it's got a black cherry taste, but it does taste, there's a hint of art, artificial. But I, I yeah. think if so, you look at it, like the marketing is 95 calories, 4.5% ABV, gluten free. It looks like people that are more interested in, in ease of consumption and are busy living their lives and not concerned about, yeah, you know. I think, I think I can understand why they are popular. It's not my, it's not my go-to yeah. drink, but I can understand why they are sold. Um, right. So, questions. If, will you answer a couple more questions for me? Is that all right? Yeah, please, please, please. Okay, so one of the things, um, and I don't know, you, you know Paris Bar Show? Yeah. Right. So obviously, you know, it's, Paris Bar Show it's very well. the best in the world. It's the best. So there I have never been a better one, a more creative <laughs> one, a greater one. It's the best. I adore Paris Bar Show. And the first couple of years I went to Paris Bar Show, um, I seen you turning up in these vintage rock star cars. And I was like, that's your man. That's the traveling mixologist. And I was like, what's with the car? And the first year it was like that maybe that's his car, you know, like maybe he drives it down and like this is how he rolls. And the second year I was, there were two of them, I think, that I like oh, no, maybe it was the third year. No, there's there always them. one. There's always one. There's and always the guy one. who writes them is called Patrick. Okay, so what is the story? <laughs> I've always wanted to know. Uh, what is the story of the cars? What like why why do you turn up in, in these really cool vintage cars? What are you drinking? Uh it's made, oh, it's, nice. It's, I don't have Volson. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gone from the market. That's the rye whiskey. They made a few bottles of rye. Well, I'll Because this is done by uh, Xavier Padovani and the gangsters. I met that first on the Paris Bar Show. Uh, yeah. Now it's defunct, but it's an amazing product. I'm going to have some pot still Glendalock Irish whiskey. All right. So... Mm. The story, so, Jorg, explain to me. There's a few very interesting things on the car. So Paris Bar Show is very much about being personal, being loved, being a big family. It's amazing. So it's done by Eric and Thierry and Xavier Padovani was in the first years also part of the team. But then the hotels became very busy. And so it's done by Thierry and Eric. Mm -hmm. So and they always wanted to do something different. So they started to pick up the speakers from the airport by Patrick. Okay. Patrick, Patrick is a very, it's a, it's a driver and he is one of the oldest, very nice made Citroën DX, which is a mm. classic old school uh, French car. So it became a tradition that when you travel to Paris, the bar show was always Sunday and Monday. Mm -hmm. You normally go on a Saturday so you can have a great night out before that <laughs> yeah. Patrick was picking you up. So what Patrick always in the car, there was always when you sit down at the, at the, at the back on the leather, there was always a big arrangement of champagne. Oh. So every time he picks it up, there was a magnum bottle of very strange champagne. You can drink while you ride to the to downtown. That's so cool. It was what always was very, very wonderful. I was always traveling on Saturday night. So my plane was always landing at six, five, I don't know. So we were, and the fun fact, Saturday night, Sunday night, the, the streets are very empty. So we were going in, in May. The weather was fine. I was sitting <laughs> in the back in my suit. I was having my windows down and we were on the motorway and just the car was so fantastic. Everybody was honking and looking and they were like, who the fuck is this in the back? Because you <laughs> sit there, you, you have a magnum of champagne, you have a driver in a suit. And for the fun of it, a few years, they put some flags in the front of the car. <laughs> That's so so good. The, people, the, people, the people were like, who the fuck is this? And then we were slowly going through whole Paris and every red light we had to stop. It was May. So all the people were sitting in the braderies and having dinner. Uh, yeah. And they were all like, what? Who's that guy? Who's and that I was always like, the German flags, you know, Mr. Oh, Champagne, no. and my driver. It was amazing. That's too cool. That, yeah. oh, I'm so glad I asked about that. That's perfect. Because um, yeah. I always looked at it and there was such a, 
there was such a cool vibe around it, you know. Uh, and but it's, it it's was fun. Never... And the fun fact is, I don't know how they do that because every year is Patrick. And uh, yeah. the the fun fact with Patrick is he's never speaking English. So the first year there was always coming one of the guys with them because you cannot call him. He doesn't speak any word of English. You cannot have a communication because he's just talking French. And uh, so okay. over the years, yeah. So I've actually just realized um, I've got a lot of questions coming through for you, but you can't see them. So um, Gabby, do you know do you know Gabby from LA? Uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe. so she's asked, curious, what does Jörg call a female bartender? Is there a German name for female bartender versus male bartender? Is that is that so what? No, that's that's one of my biggest. Uh, co that's really something. Uh, it's not saluted. So we have in Germany. We have a few words, but they have a, they are old school, and I think they have a sexistic approach. Okay. There's one is called one is called barmaid, but I think that's shit. So I always call. Uh, yeah, I think, I think also, I think I also call bartender. Or in Germany, normally what we do is we we do the slash and then we write this. The, because in Germany we have a separate ending for man and woman, and then we write bartender slash innen, which is stupid because it's an English word and you will normally not do that. But this is just to show the difference. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Oh, it's tricky. Oh, okay. So you mean like so? So like Spanish and Italian, there's like a male and female for different words, right? Yeah, and and we have this. Uh, so to 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 make it make sense in German, they've taken an English word of bartender. And then added the the, the ending for German. End. This is what I sometimes do, and I know it's stupid, but it's just to to show ah. that you talk about both genders. Wow. Okay. So, because I've never actually, I've never considered being like quite ignorant and only speaking English. The the context of the whole world is starting to try to move away from gender. If your language has gender entrenched in it, then that's a whole different set of work, right? That, that's going to make it. I mean, in Germany, it's tricky because there's two sides of the story. I think it's good to to do this and to acknowledge this, but sometimes, I mean, we have some very strange, strange political people and, and activists. They go over the top and they do a super bullshit. Now, even some news started to read everything in like three genders. You know, the neutral one, the, uh, and it's sometimes becoming a little bit strange. But I think in general, it's a good. I, I think we haven't found the rhythm yet for most of it. Yeah. But I think in general it's good to notice it and to to make a point. Uh, so we are we are working on it, but it's it's hard for me to find something for bartender. I don't know, because the two words we have in German, I think they are old school and sexistic. Yeah, I think I think for me bartender is just bartender. Like I wouldn't, because to me like bartender is a great uh, representation of what the job is. You you're working in a bar. And you're tending to the bar. Yeah, like but the bartender for me is male. Yeah, see, see, for me, it's like bartender. So when I first started bartending, I struggled to get jobs in the best bars because they only hired females, good looking females, right? They were like, nah, man. No. Yeah, like, but that's not the problem I'm, of pronunciation. That's your personal problem. But that's no, the... well, do, do you know what it was? At first, I thought it was. Everything was rigged so that like girls had a better opportunity, but actually, it was so sexist that they thought that they'd make more money from hot girls being behind a bar from because men drink more than women do. So, it was actually just like this entrenchment of of a patriarchal system. But once I broke through that, I, I just started on the dispense. I wasn't allowed to work any, the first bar job I had. You could only men could only work dispense. That they weren't allowed to actually physically serve customers. Maybe it was just because your drinks were shit. No, this is the point. Uh, you're on dispense, <laughs> so you're making more drinks. So actually, I started making drinks for the girls because I, I well, got fast. So so I was. Well, uh, they were sharing you get the tips. Share the tip. They were sharing the tips. So I was making more tips on dispense than I ever could have possibly done up there, and I didn't have to speak to customers. And because I was so new to bartending, I was doing this. I, yeah. I wasn't. I didn't have the capacity to both make the drinks quickly and deal with guests. So it was perfect. It was a perfect. It was like training wheels. It worked out well, actually. But in hindsight, I would have liked to have started over there. But I probably didn't have the personality for it. Um, so yeah, that's a perfect answer to that. Um, 
I think they, I think, I think when, when your language has in it the, the gender at the end of it, it's going to make it more difficult. But for me personally, it's bartender. And I'd say, I'd say it'd be the same for most people in the English language. Oh my God. Some of the questions are actually really long. I'm just going to put it up on the broadcast if you can. Oh, fuck. Uh, was it? I guess that all risks of being that guy that measures bricks knowing that <laughs> I think Julian's just taking the piss out of us. Oh, that's okay with Julian. He's always taking the piss out of us. Julian me. Farrell, him. right? What did he write? I cannot write it. It's very. So he's long. written like like this. Uh, so I guess that at the risk of being that guy that measures bricks, knowing what bricks concentration the shop bought serves out comes in handy, right? Question mark. Like the same recipe will naturally taste completely different using a two to one to a one to one by volume and weight. Monin, which from memory is around 171 or something, But or so you're I'm totally, to I'm totally with Julian. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I have to say, I'm totally with Julian. The thing is, like, I love when you do your homework in, in your closet and don't talk about the bullshit in public, you know? I, I try to make it very, I'm totally, he's totally right. It's very important which sugar you use because recipes are different. He's right, but the problem is if we should do that in public. He, he's, he's, he, he's on the attack. I think, I think it's because I take, I take Julian DeFerro asking us difficult questions as a compliment because he considers us to be people that have thick skin. Well, I love him. He's a great guy. He's doing a great um, job. So another question I have is, is muddling necessary, especially if shaking those tender, fresh basil leaves hard with good ice? Does it actually side by side well, taste different? It, it belongs. So if you're a very good looking guy like Julian, and you're strong and you're young and you are very, you know, <laughs> fit. So he don't need some mud love. But if you are a very sloppy, over white, old bartender from Germany like me, oh. I prefer to muddle it before because sometimes even when I shake, I forgot what I wanted to do. So I think I've done something to, to, to make a good drink. But you don't have to do it if you're good looking like Julian. But, you know, I think, I think when I remember When I muddled basically every drink, I used to like muddle there so I could get the little, you know, the little muscles in here. I used to show like get they were yep. they're gone now, but they used to be really big. So like, and I'd be doing these, and I thought it helped. I thought it helped. People must have been like, "Wow, he's muddled loads of drinks before in his time. He must be a muddling expert." But yeah, look, it's um, it's been an hour now, so you're. I don't want to keep you too long, but I like I'm to say. Fine. Thank you so much for joining the show. Um, I hope at some point, next time you're in London, we, I can sit you down here. I can make you a couple of drinks. You're probably not going to like Please. them as much as I will. I will find my glasses so I can see you. Um, but I've got some delicious whiskeys, cognacs. I'll, I'll make sure I have champagne on hand for you. And uh, yeah, Good. it'll be amazing. Um, thanks a lot, Dean. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to end by playing, um, just to preface, I'm going to end. Oh, yeah, wait. Let me get a whiskey. Uh, oh, God. Look at that. That was the slowest. See? Therapy. <laughs> right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, York. Thank you so much. Pleasure. All Thanks right, for so, inviting me. Um, for everyone else, uh, it was amazing having York on the show. Um, I'm going to end out the show by playing a video that I, I originally intended to make a video that uh, explained or demonstrated um, the hospitality demo that happened on Monday. And I wanted to speak over it and just be like, and then this happened and these people were there. But actually, as I watched the footage and I, I thought to myself, and I haven't done a re-edit. I was originally going to do a couple of edits. I just thought to myself, I'm just going to try to capture the feel and the mood. And if people recognize someone that's in the crowd, they recognize someone that's in the crowd. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. So here is my no comment. And one of my favorite things on any news channel uh, is there used to be on the Euro news, just footage put up for you to make your own decision of, upon that said no comment running along the bottom. I haven't figured out in an edit how to make no comment run along the bottom, but this is my no comment footage from something that happened recently. If I can get it to actually play, where did I put it? Is it here?
Alexa, are you wearing a helmet because you plan to start a riot? No, we are here for the safety din, health and safety. If I sleep on the mat, I have a helmet because we do a risk assessment before we do anything. <laughs>